Wednesday Night Live. Oops. Um, give me just a second to get this pulled up on my computer so I can chit chat with you guys. And for anyone watching this later on, this is a live video. The whole purpose of the live is for me to be able to chit chat, answer questions, and hang out with my friends, okay? So if that's not the kind of video that you want, feel free to watch a different video. I have many videos that are just straight up tutorials without the chit chat. Okay, here we are. I've got this pulled up. Hey Barbie, um, I may adjust the camera a little bit, we'll see. But long story short, uh, I just got back from Fluid Art Experience in Texas and I took my whole family basically, Sierra and Johnny, and this is one of the paintings that Sierra did and she asked me to resin seal it to make all these metallics really pop. So I figured, why not? We'll go ahead and do it on the live video. Hey, Katie. So sorry I missed you guys last Wednesday. Oh yeah, happy Thanksgiving. I got a lot of potatoes to peel after this. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through sealing the, the pour with resin. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. I'll move it a little more over here. You're going to send me an email. Okay, cool. It, it sounds like there's someone doing yard work right now, which is a little surprising. Uh-oh, Barbara, you messed up your shipping address like from the class. Ew, ew. Okay. Um, so yeah, how's everybody doing? How's everyone's week going? Getting ready for Thanksgiving. All right. So first things first, we are going to mix up our resin. I'll just set this here. I like to use these mixing cups. These are TCP. I'm gonna mix up a bit more than we need for this canvas because I'm also gonna probably just do some quick coasters. I know, right? It is Wednesday already. Oh, a little light dies. Okay, yeah, shoot me an email, Barbie. You just came from the craft store? Awesome. Yeah, so I'm gonna mix up more than we need for this canvas. But uh, so first things first, canvas prep. You can just go ahead and resin on this. There's no silicone in this, so I don't need to clean it or anything. But uh, one thing we did do is spray the back with water and that makes it nice and tight. You want it like drum tight. So if the canvas is saggy at all, the resin will just kind of sink in the middle. You need about three ounces per square foot. Because this is one of the deeper canvases, I'm going to just overestimate that it's two square feet, even though it's a little bit less. So I'll mix up six ounces for that. And then I'm gonna just mix up 12 so we can do another project. So this resin is mixed equal parts A and B. Um, I like to start with the part B, with, which is the hardener. Um, I'm just coating this. And then I put in part A, and I do that because part B is a little bit thinner, or part A is a little bit thicker, and I think that just makes them easier to mix in properly. Now we're gonna take our stick. I don't wanna leave the cup here because that's gonna kind of push down on the canvas, but I'm gonna pull it over here. And we're going to mix for about three to four minutes. And then just important, you want to make sure you scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. Okay. And just get it all nice and mixed up. Hey, Kathy. Um, resin likes to be used in a space that is 
I like to say around 75. Other people say 72 degrees, but I think 75 is better, but that might also kind of depend on the resin that you're using. And if I'm, this resin is intended for sealing paintings or for creating resin artwork. If you're going to use it in a mold, like for tray or coasters or things like that, you will want to preheat it, which will um, would definitely affect your working time, but it will make the resin a little bit thinner so that you can use it in the molds. Hey, hey, I'm great, how are you? So as I'm stirring here, I'm just mixing the side, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, and we wanna get a really good mixture here. If it's not fully mixed, your piece can stay a little bit sticky and not fully cure. So it's really important that you get a nice, complete mix. <laughs> well, good Barbie, I hope you do, because it's important. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. Uh, this ain't no cake. You gotta get every little bit of that flour mixed in or you'll be in trouble. Hello from Australia. Yeah, where's everybody tuning in from? Let me know in the chat box. And also don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you're having a fantastic time, feel free to super chat or super sticker. Always, always, always appreciated. And I saw some of you, I think. Well, I've seen definitely some of you within the last couple weeks. <laughs> Um, I just got back from Fluid Art Experience in Texas, literally last night, and it was awesome. Okay, so I think this is pretty well mixed. So it's super easy to do this. I don't overcomplicate it. I don't even use any tools. I just use my hands. I'm going to pour the resin right in the middle of the canvas. And we'll pour out a nice amount. I have more in the cup so I can always add more later if needed. Um, Robin, I was actually teaching. So, I mean, I always learn by teaching as well, but I unfortunately did not get to take any classes this time because I was teaching the entire time. Okay, so now that we've got this nice big puddle in the middle, we don't wanna immediately push it to any side because liquid is going to follow liquid. So I like to kind of go in a circular motion and just slowly push it out. This is also going to continue to mix the resin as we go. So not only am I slowly pushing it out to the edges, I'm also continuing to mix it. It's really important that you get that full, full mix. Okay, so just slowly go out towards your edges and your corners. And then once you've got your canvas virtually covered, you can start to go over the edges. But until then, just go right up to the edge and not over, because otherwise you'll just have all your resin running off one side for no reason. And we all know resin ain't cheap. This resin has um, a really nice working time. It's typically about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the temperature where you are. So I'm now starting to push it over the edge. Um, it has a maximum UV protection. So that means it's gonna keep your colors nice and bright for as long as possible. All resins do start to yellow over time, but this one will take quite a while to yellow. Um, and it's great for sealing coasters. So like if you do pours on coasters, because it has maximum heat protection, it's great for tumblers. It's also food safe, all the good stuffs. Okay, so we've got the top completely covered and you can kind of see when I push here that there's still quite a bit of resin on the top. Um, you do not need this really thick layer. And if you want it to be thicker, just put more than one layer but we're gonna just start using this to shove it over the side and get that side fully covered. Okay. Let me know guys as I'm going, if you have any and all questions, I'm here to answer them. This is really simple. 
I'll push it over to this side. You can also always add a little sparkle to this, like if you want to add gold dust or diamond dust. Sierra didn't ask me to do that, but if this was my piece, I probably would. <laughs> That's just how I roll. Um, it's coming along, Katie. It's coming along. Getting there, getting there. I was there today, uh, kind of get prepping and setting up for the, the first class and the holiday party grand opening thingy. So pretty exciting. Okay, does your resin require me to use a respirator? You know how often I get that question? I swear, all the time. Um, so there's no requirement um, of anything because it's your body, your choice. Uh, this resin does have zero VOCs. However, you always wanna listen to your body. I'm not a doctor, right? I can't tell you what you may or may not be allergic to or may or may not have issues with, but always, always, always do resin in a very well ventilated space. And then I do recommend to use a respirator whenever possible. And of course, listen to your body. See if you have any, you know, issues with it, okay? This is the Mixed Media Girl Artist Resin, yes. Okay. It looks like there's no paint covering the canvas on the ends. Well, you know, this is my daughter's painting. She did it how she wants. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of metallics in here. May all be metallic, so it's a lot of transparent colors as well. Yeah. All right, so I have some nice coverage. And now we're gonna get rid of the air bubbles. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would absolutely say to wear gloves either way because it's extremely sticky, but protect your skin. Um, let me see. I'm looking for my torch, which I seem to have hidden for myself. Oh, I found it. <laughs> okay. So it's a little culinary torch, not super special or exciting. I just put the camera even a little bit closer. Looks like a little far from this side. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she did a great job on this. This was in Mina Villegas' class, by the way. And I'm just gonna hold it a couple inches away. I'm not holding it at any one spot for a length of time. And I'm just sweeping it back and forth. Don't go too fast though. If you do this, you will get rid of no air bubbles, okay? So you don't have to go that fast, but keep it moving. And you'll actually see the air bubbles pop before your eyes. You may not be able to see it through this camera. Don't forget your signs. And that's it, it's really simple. Um, sometimes you might want to give it a little bit of time and then come back and pop the air bubbles one more time. That can help especially if you're doing resin when it's cold. This torch seems like it's almost out of juice. Um, after you pop the air bubbles, look at it from an angle just to make sure you didn't miss any like hair, whoop, any hairs or stray things in there. And that's really all there is to it. Super duper duper simple. Uh, one other common question I get, I get is, uh, what about the drips on the bottom? So those, for me, the best solution is to just sand them off at the end, okay? Uh, some people like to pre-tape. I don't like to do that because I think having that resin actually wrap around the back of the canvas is the best. Otherwise, it could actually peel off of the canvas if it doesn't have that secure bond. Okay, so there's that. Super easy. Let me go ahead and scooch this over and then we'll do another quick, fun project. And definitely always raise it up so the drips have somewhere to go. I should have done this from the other side of my table. I don't know why I'm trying to do it over here. All right, one second. Okay. 
All right, we're gonna switch it up a little bit here. We're gonna do some coasters. Yeah, I love her style too. All right, I'm gonna do, I think, some of these hexagon coasters and we're gonna do alcohol ink. This is one of the easiest ways to do coasters and it's so fun and beautiful. You can use any and all colors that you would like. I think because tomorrow is Thanksgiving, I'm gonna do some earthy coasters, a little more warm tone. So I'm gonna start off by putting the resin just clear directly into my molds, nothing in it. And how much resin you need will depend on the mold you are using. It does not matter if I tell you how much I put into these molds because it's gonna matter how much the molds you're using take. So if for some reason when you purchase the molds, it doesn't tell you how much resin they take, what you can do is you can actually fill up the mold with water and then pour that into a measuring cup to determine how many ounces of resin it takes. I never super worry about it though. I kind of just pour a little bit in it and go with it. Um, hey Lori. Now one other note on these. With silicone molds, you do not want to use a torch. You will in fact ruin the mold. So how do you get rid of the air bubbles? Well one, you could use a heat gun or two, you can use some 91% isopropyl alcohol. It is important that it's 91%. Do not try to use 70% or 50%, okay? Um, did you tape the canvas on the backside? I did not. From the class that she did the painting, the wooden part was taped off, but no, the canvas itself is not taped on the back. Um, and yes, ooh, two notes. Veronica just mentioned. So there's an art auction that just started on my Facebook page. Please check that out. Also, my biggest sale of the year is going on right now. Um, you can get 20% off of any orders over $100 on my website with the code FRIDAY22. It's my Black Friday sale. Oh, hey, Jackie. Um, and I've never had a discount this big. I'm kind of freaking out <laughs> about it and hoping that it works out okay on my end. But for you guys, it is the perfect time to stock up on resin, paint, kits for classes, um, all of your Christmas gifts, etc. Okay. Yeah, it's a little terrifying. I'm like, is this a good idea? Okay, so I'm going to be using a paper towel to wipe my hands off. And then I'm going to be using, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, Jackie is a big fan of my resin, so that's exciting. Uh, I'm going to use a few different alcohol ink brands. This, oh my gosh, do you guys see what I just did there? Can you guys see that? Yep, courses are included in the sale. Who can tell me already what I did wrong? <laughs> it's hardwired into me. I was like, I'm gonna use browns and earth colors. And then all of a sudden, blue is the first thing that goes in there. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cheat. We are gonna make this blue into green. <laughs> so I'm gonna take some uh, yellow. <laughs> And boom, we fixed it. Earth. <laughs> oh my goodness. Literally, it's like hard water. I know it is. It is largely water. But when I say earth tones, I mean like dirt, right? You have earth, air, water, fire. I'm going for earth, not water or whatever. Oh my gosh. That is such like, okay. <coughs> So now I'm gonna use some Havana Brown. So that yellow is a pinata color. This is also a pinata color. And you can use as many brands of alcohol inks as you want, it does not matter. Now I like to layer <laughs> the pinata white in here. 
Um, that for me is what kind of gives it depth, makes it a little brighter, brings out the colors. We'll probably still have a little bit of that blue peeking through, just FYI. <laughs> um, but I'm just gonna layer the white in there. One other note, make sure that you shake these up before using them, okay? Now I have actually a pretty earthy purple that I'm gonna use, it's called eggplant. And it's kind of a grayish purple, I guess you could say. It's really pretty, I think it'll go well with this color combo. And can't go wrong with purple, right? Okay, and then let's get in there with some Calabaza Orange. Awesome, SJ, thank you for joining. Glad you're here. Now, as a note, just so nobody's surprised when they do this project, um, you'll notice that the inks tend to kind of move towards the inside. So they're not going to stay exactly where you put them. They're going to move around. That's okay. Let's get in here with some more white. I think these are pretty. What do you guys think? Kind of earthy. Should I put a little more brown in here? I've got some more brown. I don't want to do metallics on this one. Metallics can kind of take over. In regards to using white, do you feel that the white takes over in your resin sometimes? Um, It definitely can. You can see how it spreads out. But with this, because of the weight, the white sinks. Like if you keep watching this, you'll notice the white almost disappears. And that's why I use this particular white because I want it to sink through the other colors and push those colors down to create this incredible depth. So if you keep watching it, that white will all but disappear. It's really hard to use too much of it. But that being said, you know, kind of depends what material you're using, you know? Uh, these are alcohol inks in resin. Yeah. Um, so, no problem, Robin. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to take a stick and I'm going to kind of swirl these colors together. That gives me personally the best pattern that I like. How long does it take a resin coaster to dry? That depends on the resin you're using, but this resin is about 24 hours to cure. If it's hotter or colder, that will affect the cure time, okay? So look how pretty that is. It's going to move as it dries, so that's okay to be expected. These still seem like they're pretty cool toned. So I think I have enough to do one more set. And what I'm gonna do on these is I'm gonna just let them sit for probably about 20 minutes and then spray them with the alcohol ink so that I'm not really affecting the design that much. If you spray it right now with alcohol ink, it will affect that design. Right, let's do one more little coaster set here and I'm going to use no cool colors. Only warm colors. At least that's my goal. What my subconscious does, well, we can't always control that. Apparently. One more quick note on these two. I left just a tiny bit of space um, available. Oh, did I say spray with alcohol ink? Okay, I do mean spray it with alcohol, 91% ice proof alcohol. But I think you knew what I meant, so I think we're okay. So as a note here, I did leave a tiny bit of space available in here. I like to put clear resin. I know, right, grass blue. I'm gonna hide all my blues. I like to put clear resin in here once this layer is dry so that uh, the alcohol inks are fully sealed in. Not required, but I think it'll just help them to last longer. So I'm spraying this with 91% ice probe alcohol. Um, and then warm colors, warm colors. Let's start with orange. As a note too, if you don't wait for that alcohol to di dissipate, it'll affect the inks. I'm not gonna worry about it, but 
you'll see that they don't spread out like they normally do. That's okay. That's okay. All right, here's some yellow. And this is a warmer yellow. There's about 6 million different colors of alcohol inks, you guys. So you can literally get any colors at your heart's desire. Let's go in here with a little of this Havana Brown. And we'll get some red in here and stuff too. But we're going Thanksgiving, fall, autumn colors. Woo, that was too much. <laughs> this bottle is a little stuck for some reason. Hold on. Let me try shaking it. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, I also have a sort of earthy red, I think. Let me see. I think it's this. Oh, I have terracotta also. It's cranberry. Six million. What did I say? Did I say something? Sometimes I just talk and I'm not sure what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, this one's cranberry. Look at that earthy red. Fire. These look like fire. Okay. Oh, yes. Six million different inks. That is true. I've counted. That's the accurate number. I am going to throw a little white in here now. Keep in mind, red and white make pink, but that's okay. So we'll get a little of that pinkish in there. Um, I'm gonna use a brighter yellow here. This is sun bright yellow. I missed. <laughs> then I don't think I'm gonna add pink because we kind of naturally have pink, but I have one more brown here, burrow brown. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of that. It's just a slightly different brown. I can never remember which is which, but one of them is a little more orangey than the other. Warm purple, oh, fine. We'll go in here with the eggplant. It works. Okay, that's plenty. <laughs> All right, so that was my slight cheat there on the colors. Now we're gonna go back in with white. And then you can, of course, leave it just like that. But I'm going to do the swirly swirl because I think it's just better. And you'll really see that swirly design on the other side. It'll kind of disappear on this top side, but on the other side, it'll really come through. Those are some beautiful fall colors, I got to say. <laughs> what color would I say I use the most? Blue. I think everybody could answer that for me. <laughs> uh, blue. Marshmallows. I can see that. I'm going to actually swirl these ones one more time. As the resin sits there and start, starts to set a little bit, it'll hold on to patterns a little better. So this could kind of hold on to that pattern just a little bit better. And then that's really all there is to it. Um, these will be dry by tomorrow. I'll put a little clear in there and then that's it. Let me bring you guys in for a close up because I think with the lights here, it's a little hard to see the colors. And then we'll all go uh, bake some pies and whatever else you're doing tonight. Family time. Okay, camera's gonna shake for a second. Close your eyes or don't, that's okay. So here's Sierra's piece. And you can just see it's got this like glass-like finish. It was already pretty shiny because of metallics, but that's just gonna make the metallics really pop. Uh, the promo code is FRIDAY22, and that's actually pinned to the top of my website. If you guys make sure you're signed up for my email list, notifications also. So here's these. You can already see a little bit over here. Hey, Jerry, where it's kind of pulling away a little bit from the side. Okay. Pumpkin pie cake done. Green next. Awesome. 
I'm in charge of potatoes. So I have to make mashed potatoes and um, one other potato dish for like the people. Yeah, I'm really loving both sets actually. I'm, I'm I'm super excited to see how these guys dry. It's not a color combo I typically use. So, and they're both pretty earthy, even though the other ones have some blues and greens in it. All right, guys. So make sure you do not miss out on that Black Friday sale. I'm not joking when I say it's literally the craziest sale I've ever had. Uh, I think the most I've ever done is like maybe 15% off site-wide and this is 30 or not 30 <laughs> that would be really crazy this is 20 percent off um, and that's courses resin pouring paint split cups bottle bottoms aprons you name it 20 percent off with that promo code friday 22 and that is pinned to the top of my website there's not much more details than that but it's on the website so you can see it all right, got another person making mashed potatoes, awesome. I saw one more question, have I tried making my own alcohol inks? I have not, hey Clara. Um, I have not made my own alcohol inks. I've never really have had the need to, but you can pretty easily with some old markers. Um, yeah, and then yeah, so Amanda also asked, how will you, so you will you still spray the alcohol one more time? Yes. Yes, I will. Um, we could probably do it now, but just be prepared. It may affect it a little bit. Let's see. Yep. See, that kind of affects the design a little bit. I don't know if you can see it so well from here, but it's okay. It's not such a big deal at this point. Um, and keep in mind, I am putting that clear resin layer over it. So even if I didn't spray it, it would still be fine. Uh, surprisingly, my favorite alcohol ink, I think of all time still, is this one. This eggplant color. <laughs> but if you're asking about brands, I actually don't have a favorite brand. Um, I like Pinata and Ranger equally, and I've been using a lot of Pixis alcohol inks recently. So it just depends on what you're doing. They're all pretty fantastic. But this color is the bomb this is like my 10th bottle of it and this one color has like seven thousand colors in it it's incredible like it's not even a chameleon color but it is it'll be blue it'll be purple it'll be gray it'll be sometimes a little brown so it's really pretty okay all right guys have a fantastic <laughs> thanksgiving thank you guys so much for joining me i really really appreciate you Hope you really enjoy time with your families tomorrow or whatever you're doing. Have fun with your dog, etc. <laughs> Netflix and chill. <laughs> I know, right? I would have never thought eggplant would be that gorgeous, but it is. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.